expected of me. So, so when he came in, all the big centre arms used to look at Big Cass and say, right, I'll take him. You, you worry about the little one over there. He loves competition. He wants to outscore you, but he also wants you to try and outscore him. He loves that. That drives Teddy. When I went to Nottingham Forest, we sat in my first meeting with the rest of the players and the manager. We sat waiting to go out before a game, and Brian Clough put the ball in the middle of the room on a towel and just said his, his only philosophy was, there's only one ball that you're playing with out there. Go and win it. Once you've won it, play with it, enjoy it, and help your mate. And that was it. Go on, off you go. And I'm sort of looking around to the rest of the players. Well, that's it. No team talk of, like, we're not picking him up, watching him from set plays and all that. No. Nope. Go and win the ball. Once you've won it, enjoy it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to enjoy it here. He accumulated very good players at Nottingham Forest. I was playing with the likes of Des Walker, Stuart Pearce, Nigel Clough. Roy Keane was a young man then. The players just knew the way the manager wanted to play the, play the game. I wouldn't say he was at the, the pinnacle of his career at that time, but it was still a big eye-opener, and I'm so glad I had the experience of playing under him for, for that year that I had at Nottingham Forest. Twenty-four hours after the birth of the new English Premier League, two of its leading clubs take centre stage. Tottenham have made a bid for you and we've accepted it. Do you want to go? I think they called it off and then it was on and then it was off and I was getting concerned and I thought to myself, is he, is he going to come or not? But we got our man, so I was absolutely thrilled. From the first moment I met Terry Van Der I loved everything about him. I loved the way he spoke, I loved the way he he made players feel. I was so lucky, I, I explain it a lot, that I had very good managers at the right times of my career. Terry Venables came along at the right time of my career. I, I was becoming a very good player. And of course we had, around that time, Darren Anderton also was a bit underrated, but well underrated. The two of them played really, really well together. So when he came, he came about two or three, you know, games into the season, you know, we had been struggling, you know, to score goals. On the plane home from Lazio, and he was sat next to me, he goes, you moan a lot, don't you? You play, you expect a lot out of people. And I'm like, yeah, I do get frustrated. And I think we just, from that moment, he just, he looked after me, really. I had two teams, which is, when I say two teams, I had the uh, Gascoigne Lineker team, and then I had the Sheringham Anderton Campbell, uh, etc. team, and we look, we look exactly what I was hoping for. I just uh, got going after this after Christmas and scored a lot of goals after Christmas and, and won the Golden Boot, which was a, a great start for me in my first season at Tottenham. Nothing surprised me, Teddy. You think he actually could have played in an overcoat because he could just jog around and he would be able to do all the right things. He's scoring hat tricks, getting himself into the England squad. The last three or four months of that first season, I think he, he probably scored you know, 15 to 20 goals, and luckily I was involved in most of them. Sheringham, it is becoming a right. You always get managers coming in, leaving, uh, sackings, leaving for whatever reason. And throughout the years, you know, you, you come to terms with it. But the fact that it was a long and drawn out affair and there was problems between him and the chairman, that it seemed inevitable. It was the night that we played at Arsenal. We, we beat them that night. It was me and Sugar, and at the time, it was, it was huge, uh, high profile, and uh, something that uh, obviously was a huge disappointment for me, but life goes on. Neil Ruddock's wife was, you know, locking herself to the chairman's gates and things like that. It was, um, it was a bizarre time and at the end of my first year in the Premier League. It's easy to say it, and people say, oh, yeah, well, yeah. It, it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen, but I, I was really confident. I thought we were getting better and better, and there, I thought that we had plans ahead as well that would have made sure of that. But there you go. Here, whether he is going to be able to continue. 
the injury coming from that earlier challenge by Brian Robson. I had a knee injury that I thought I was going to be out, only going to be out two weeks, and then it was two weeks more, two weeks more, two weeks more. Five and a half months I was out, so it was only to the latter part of the season that I came back. The team went to pieces. It really did. It was um, it, it was awful. I did, we didn't win a game for probably three or four months. The physios have probably told the chairman that, as they want to know what happens with their with their players, you know, what, what's the situation with this player, that player? I thought you said with Teddy that he'd only be out two weeks. Now it's been three months or whatever. So by the time he came to me and said, "Oh, you don't want to play," it was it was a little bit. What do you mean I don't want to play? He said, "Oh, you're a Terry Venables man. You, you don't want to play for Tottenham anymore." And it was couldn't couldn't be any further from the truth. So uh, that was that was quite. Uh, hurtful as such to, for him to even put that slant on me. Well, that's what the Spurs fans have been uh, waiting for. And you can hear the chants, Teddy, Teddy, Teddy Sheringham. Teddy Sheringham makes his comeback. Oh, me across. Goal! Oh, no! What a comeback! And it wasn't until Teddy came back in a game away at Norwich. Um, he'd hardly trained but came and played and you know, I think he scored the winner and we won 2-1 at Norwich who were a team who were flying at the moment and it just highlighted how much we had missed him. We managed to escape relegation by the, the skin of our teeth which made it very hairy for a club like Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur are safe. The club for these fans must do their best to make sure that this nerve-wracking experience doesn't happen again. Ozzy Ardiles came to me and he said, Teddy, I, I, just, I just want to let you know something. And I was like, yeah, go on, Ozzy, yeah. what, what is it? He said, uh, I'm thinking about signing Maradona. And I was like, Ozzy, do it, do it. You've got to do it, get him here. And he, he went away, he said, look, I'm trying my hardest to try and get him. And uh, he came, came back a couple of days and he said, look, look, I've decided not to go for him. There's too much baggage with him, but there's someone else you might like. We're going to sign Jurgen Klinsmann in, in the next couple of days. And I was like, oh, well. That's not a bad second best, is it? Okay. Jürgen Klinsmann, uh, Jika Popescu, you know, we had a, um, the start of that season, it was called the, you know, the famous five, very attacking. I wanted to play football in the way that I always thought the football had to be playing. So I was, I was, I mean, I was prepared to, to, to take risk. After saying that, I, I accept the criticism that uh, my team at the time was unbalanced. Yes, it was. So at the end of the day, I pay, I pay the price, and well, I, I have to accept that. Things just didn't quite work out, and that was my whole time in my five year, years at Tottenham. Which it was nearly, but that wasn't good enough for me in, in my football career. Decent ball in, and a goal for Sheringham. It's quite a political club and the complexities around that at the time, you know, the management team in the boardroom, the link between the place was a bit bit of a, an awkward, volatile, sensitive uh, environment and you got the vibe. I wasn't happy with being a nearly, nearly player, near, nearly club and uh, I'd had words with the chairman and he'd had words with me and I said, look, if, if it's not going to change, then then I want out. And he said, OK, we'll go. And that, that was it. My dad had left a couple of messages on my answer machine and said, Ted, Ted, ring me quick. Ted, Ted, ring me quick. And I'm like, it's not like my dad, he doesn't normally do that. So I rung him straight away as soon as I arrived back from holiday. I said, Dad, what, what is everything okay, okay? And he said, yeah, 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 Tottenham have had a bit, to, uh, bid from someone in the Premier League and they, they want you to go and speak to him. And I was like, okay, who is it? He said, well, have a guess. I said, well, Newcastle, they're the ones. And he went, nah, nah. He said, have another guess. I went, oh, it must be Liverpool then. Because that was the speculation. He went, no, 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 better than that. And I went, not Man United. And he went, yeah, you've got to go and speak to him this afternoon. So put the phone down and I was up to, to Manchester and signed by the next morning. I think if I look at every club that I played for, Millwall, Forest, Tottenham, Man United, all the way along there, I had to work hard to win the fans over.
and Manchester United have a penalty. It's Teddy Sheringham, the former Tottenham hero, who's going to take it. The pressure very much on him here. I think there was always grumblings, mumbles about, yeah, we're not keen on him, and but you know you you just have to work on your game and make sure that you that you show what you you're made of. Sharing up his first goal since moving to Manchester United from Tottenham, and you can see there the pleasure etched on his face. It was big shoes to fill because it was Eric Cantona's boots, so he was coming into a difficult, difficult job in convincing the fans that he was the right man. His passing was unbelievable. The way that he was putting players in uh, to, into crossing positions, obviously the partnership with his, with his striking partners was top, top, top class. He started the season OK, and then the team struggled that season. We didn't win the league, and uh, we went out to Europe, to Monaco. Uh, I'd scored not a massive amount of goals, but I had a steady first four, five, six months at Manchester United. I remember there was a a two-week period around March where we had four injuries that were crucial to our team at the time. We had big games in, in the league and uh, we faltered for that two, three-week period which let Arsenal back in. I mean, I think, I think we were something like six or seven points clear and with games in hand and should have gone even more so. So um, it was a tough time for us around that period and, and Arsenal got back and pipped us. Dwight York, he came that summer, 98. No one knew that him and Andy Cole would strike up that kind of partnership. No one knew that. Even the manager, he's on record saying that, he didn't know that was going to happen. I'm sure that he didn't know what his best striking partnership would have been before the season. But it just happened that way. So for Teddy to still make such a, an impact on that season just speaks volumes of the quality that he delivered for the team. It was quite obvious that uh, Yorkie and Coley were his preferred striking partnership and um, I couldn't break myself into the team, which is understandable. Myself and Oli Solskjaer were always in and around the team. He's sharing up. What now? If Teddy and me didn't play well, Yorkie and Coley came on and uh, up front we had the same luxury in midfield and at the back as well, to be fair, so uh, it was just about... Uh, we pushed each other on, and that's a good, healthy competition. And once again, that summed up his perfect partnership with Dwight York. And I can remember around probably early February, I think the manager came to me and he saw that I got another injury, like a little niggly one, and he said, look, don't worry about getting yourself fit for the next two or three weeks. Don't worry about that. He, he made sure that I was fully fit and raring to go and, and made me feel wanted that I was going to be part of that final push and what a final push to that end of that season. The fact that I started that last fixture against Tottenham when we had to win showed me that I was still in and around the manager's thoughts without a doubt. Gary Neville, Cole in space, brings it down, it's Andy Cole! Oh, it's a great goal from Andy Cole! We ended up winning, but... I was part of that Premier League winning season. I'd scored the first goal in the FA Cup final to make it 1-0 and, and then played a part in the second goal for us to win the, the FA Cup 2-0. So once that had happened, getting the man of the match in that game, I, I thought to myself, I've got half a chance of, of playing in the, in the Champions League final here yeah? until perhaps I think, I don't know whether it was the Tuesday morning or the Wednesday morning before the game, he. he uh, Came and, came and pulled me again and said I wouldn't be starting, so the highs and lows carried on. We weren't playing well in that game. And so many times in, in that season, you know, when things are not happening and the manager makes a substitution, when you look out and you see someone like Teddy come on, you think, yeah, absolutely yes, this can change the game. That's a quality that he has. I can remember thinking we're still in this game. The, the season that we'd had, we were always in a game and it was still only 1-0. Bayern Munich had, had had a lot of chances to make it 2-0, but, but they hadn't. I remember at half-time, because the gaffer uh, 
came over to, uh, went over to Teddy, spoke a lot to Teddy, and obviously had his plans to uh, to put him on at some point if we didn't get goals. And then when we got a chance from a corner, and then Big Pete was coming up, you know that it's it's really tight for time, and we we got to do something special. Giggs has had a, a shot on the volley with his right foot from the edge of the box, and we all know that he's never going to hit the target from there with his right foot. So I, I was alert to the situation. The ball came rolling past me and I just helped it into the goal and the sweetest goal of my career. I'll never forget coming off the plane back from Barcelona with the trophy and, and getting on the open top bus and, and turning into Dean's Gate and just seeing the whole area packed with people people hanging out of shop windows, houses, flats, on, on bus shelters on the top, hanging off of trees, just to get a glimpse of us and our trophies. It's always important when you come to Man United and you, uh, you want to be a success. You want to, win, you want to win trophies, you want to win medals. And you can go a whole career without any, winning anything, and I think you'll have regrets. And Teddy made the right decision coming to us, because probably the only chance he had to win big trophies. When I first went to Manchester United, I signed a three-year deal. And at the end of the three-year deal, the manager wanted me to sign for another year. And I can remember phoning Steve McLaren while I was away on holiday and said, look, I will sign the deal. I just want you to know and I want you to tell the manager that I'm not happy with being on the bench and I'm going to fight like, like hell to, to be the number one striker. And he was like, OK, I'll tell him. And uh, lo and behold, I, I got back in the team and had a fantastic year. We won the league again and I won accolades that I probably didn't even dream of a couple of years before. And Sheringham! Patrick Hero! Superhero for Manchester United at the moment. There is just no stopping Teddy Sheringham. It was a great achievement with the, with the strikers we had at the club and the amount of games he played, but he really got into his own. The more, the more time Teddy played, we got used to him, he got used to us. And Teddy was quick in his football mind. He was one of the cleverest footballers I've ever played with. Who else but Teddy Sheringham? Ever ready, Teddy. Teddy was always a Spurs guy at heart. He went to Manchester United and made a, a move which worked out you know, fantastic for him. It really did. The budget wasn't that great at, at Tottenham at this moment in time and uh, we were looking for some free transfers and I heard on the grapevine that Teddy might not be staying, that he was a free transfer and uh, instantly I was, I was interested in, in trying to bring him back to Tottenham. I obviously wasn't at the pinnacle of my career. I was 36, 37 when I had my last two years at Tottenham but loved playing for him, I enjoyed playing for him and, and still felt I was doing a, doing a good job there. So. Again, coming close in the League Cup, we got beat to Blackburn in the final, but it was nearly again. Anderson, free header, fourth goal, the 300 for Teddy Sheringham, the triple turn up. A big reason for me to re-sign a deal and stay at Spurs at the time was the fact that Teddy was coming back, so we were at, having conversations to see what we, we were both going to do, and it was great when he came back just to have that buzz of him being back on the training pitch and you know playing in the same team. It was a different time in his career. Um, I think he felt content that, uh, that he'd won things at United, but he had only one thing in mind. Teddy, Teddy Sheringham was a winner. If he's playing in an eight side, he, want, he wants to win. And that was the great example that I've said about Teddy. Not only was a great player, but his attitude at the training ground was, uh, was like that day in and day out. Tell you what, it's a big surprise when, when all of a sudden you see your name mentioned as a, as a veteran, as a footballer. And we, you know, it, it comes to us all. I, I tell you, lads, it comes to us all. Going down to Portsmouth to play for Harry Redknapp. Uh, how good is that? Uh, with all the managers that I'd, I'd played under, you know, Harry had a fantastic reputation. And he came down there and he said, look, I want you to... I want you to come down and enjoy and, and pass on your experience and, and help us in our, in our first year in, in the Premier League again. It was like a party atmosphere and uh, I think there was, a, there was a few new players in there, the, the likes of Yakubu came in and Patrick Berger and we enjoyed a, a very good season there down there and shame it only lasted one year for me but it was a, it was a good year, I enjoyed that. 
when Alan Pardew rang and said, how do, how do I fancy coming to West Ham? Uh, West Ham were in the championship at the, at the time, but it felt right. It was the, the aim this year to win promotion. We've done that. Next year is definitely going to be the, to stay in the Premier League, and hopefully we can do that. Sheridan! Oh, yes! Teddy was always looking for the next step. He wouldn't stand still. I think that that's the one thing I found, and even at my time at West Ham, you know, he was looking to carry on playing. Sheridan! And it's in! To be playing at this level at the age of 40, well, that's a celebration in itself. It was mentioned as a big thing, but to me it wasn't. I still felt fit and able, and I, and I was lucky enough that you know, I had had major injuries that had stopped me from playing. The most important thing was keeping West Ham up, and uh, that's what we managed to do. And then in the summer, you know, West Ham decided to, to go one way, and Teddy moved on. We used to nickname Ted Saw the, the android at Millwall because he literally did everything wrong. He ate wrong, he drank wrong, and he sometimes socialised a little bit too much. But when he crossed that line, he was so professional. You'd, you know, you'd go to his house and you open Ted's fridge door. Chocolate bars, Coke, sausages, and Teddy didn't have an ounce of fat on him. It used to drive me crazy. We went to Lanzarote one year. Of course, I had room with Ted done, ate, drunk, slept, everything the same as Ted. I put six pound on, he come back two pound lighter. Sam Allardyce phoned me in the summer and said, how do I fancy coming down on a part-time basis and, and helping out the strikers at, at West Ham? And it just felt right. And he's proved a very good boss to work for. And I'm enjoying my time there and, and passing on the, the knowledge that I have. I've loved every minute of being a professional footballer and uh, wish I could do it again.